Good morning and a very warm welcome to the International English Language Service on Sunday, August 25th, 2013. The call to worship today comes from Psalm chapter 92, verses 1 to 4. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute, and on the harp with harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. We will now rise and sing together the hymn of preparation, You Are Jehovah. seated. Let's prepare our hearts as we come into the Lord's presence. The Lord God, Jehovah, the Holy One, not only of Israel, but of all his people, everywhere and in every generation. As we prepare our hearts, let's bow in worship and if necessary, confess anything that the Holy Spirit may remind us of during our life in the past week, any thought, 
any word, any action which has not honored or pleased the Lord. This is our moment when we can bring it in humble contrition and repentance to the Lord our God. Let's pray together. Our loving Heavenly Father, as we come again into your presence this morning, it is in and only in and through the precious name and through the precious blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Jehovah, our loving Heavenly Father, we bow before you. We want to take these few moments to prepare our hearts in confessing anything, Lord, that has not pleased you or honored you this past week. Again, we do thank you for the assurance of your holy and precious word, which reminds us that if we confess our sins, you are faithful, always faithful. And you are just, always just, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it's with this, this assurance, Lord, that we come before you this morning. You are not only Jehovah, the high and holy and mighty one, but you are also Emmanuel, God with us, sinful people. And yet, Lord, you have deigned to come and be among us for a while. Lord Jesus, again, we thank you this morning for all that you have done, for all that you are doing, and for all that you will do in the future in implicit obedience to your Father's holy and eternal and loving will. We thank you, Father, for each one who is here this morning We ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you, by your Spirit, will work in each of our hearts as we worship you, as we sing your praise, as we expose our hearts and our minds to your holy word. May we not only be hearers of your word, Father, but also be doers of your precious word. We thank you for our brother who is with us this morning to minister and to share your word with us. I ask, Lord, your richest blessing upon him and his family. May he sense your anointing here this morning as he will presently stand to share your word. May we, your people, be receptive and obedient to your word.
We thank you for our dear sister who is leading our service. We thank you for our sister who is playing the piano and others who are involved. We thank you for them, for their lives, for their encouragement. I pray too that you would richly bless them and their families. We pray for any Lord this morning of our number who are unwell and for any reason are not with us this morning. We ask, Lord, that wherever they are, at home or in hospital or on vacation, we pray, Lord, that you would bless them today. Quicken their hearts, strengthen them by your Spirit. We pray for any who are among us this morning, Lord, who have any particular kind of need, whether it's in leading in their lives or comfort during a difficult, sad situation. Whatever our needs are this morning, Lord, we come together individually and collectively and trust you. not only to be close to us, Lord, but to touch our hearts and our minds and our situations in a way that we can bear witness to our family, to our colleagues, to our friends. This is the work of God in my life, in my family's life, or whatever the situation may be. Again, Lord, we want to thank you for the leadership of this church and for each one who are right now taking a Sunday school class, ministering your word in whatever capacity, we pray, Father, your richest blessing upon them at this hour. We thank you, too, for the new building that is now up and available for ministry. We do pray, Lord, specifically for those who are responsible for de making decisions related to the ministry in the days to come, that you would grant them wisdom and a sense, Lord, of your guidance and of your purpose in the operation of this building. For those who work behind the scenes in the office, we commit them to you today, Father, and pray, too, that you would bless them in their service to you. As we continue in the Lord's presence, now let's repeat together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Don't miss the point. Amen. Can we say amen this morning? A little louder so what and I can hear. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for his mercy and for his grace, for his kingdom. I'd again like to turn to the back of our bulletin just for a few moments. There should be a slip of paper in your bulletin entitled Prayer and Praise. There are two slots on the back of our bulletin and uh, one is for prayer requests, and the other is for praise items. The purpose is that you may have a part in our fellowship Sunday by Sunday by writing clearly any prayer request that you may have related to yourself personally, to your family, to whatever situations you may be in, and also praise items. God delights in the praises of his people. 
I'm just going to leave you now for one moment as you read the prayer requests and the praise items, and then we'll pray together. Our loving Father, we want to identify these prayer requests and praise items in our own lives. We pray for wisdom that we may be able to discern not only what is right and wrong, Father, but also what is your will in our lives day by day. <clears throat> we pray for your love that we may be able, Lord, to love one another with your pure, holy love. We pray, Lord, that we may be so indwelt by your Spirit that we will be unconscious of the fact that we are living in a humble, gracious, God-centered way that honors you that we may be responsible for the tasks that are entrusted to us. We thank you and praise you, Father, for also for all the wonderful things that you do, for your blessings, for your love that accepts us just as we are, for your compassion day by day, for the thoughts that you have for us and for all the plans that you plan for us. Father, we praise you and we thank you. Now as we continue in your presence, Father, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, amen. The reading of scripture today comes from 1 Kings, chapter 18, verses 20 to 40. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. But the people said nothing. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only one of the Lord's prophets left, but Baal has 450 prophets. Get two bulls for us. Let Baal's prophets choose one for themselves and let them cut it into pieces and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. I will prepare the other bowl and put it on the wood, but not set fire to it. Then you call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by fire, he is God. Then all the people said, what you say is good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one of the bulls and prepare it first, since there are so many of you. Call on the name of your God, but do not light fire. So they took the bull given them and prepared it. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning till noon. Baal, answer us, they shouted. But there was no response. No one answered and they danced around the altar they had made. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said. 
Surely he is a god. Perhaps he is deep in thought or busy or traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and must be awakened. So they shouted louder and slashed themselves with swords and spears, as was their custom until their blood flowed. Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. But there was no response. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come here to me. They came to him, and he prepared the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. Elijah took 12 stones, one for each tribe's descendant from Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come, saying, your name shall be Israel. With the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he dug a trench around it large enough to hold two sails of seed. He arranged the wood, cut the bowl into pieces, and laid it on the wood. Then he said to them, fill four large jars with water and pour it on the offering and on the wood. Do it again, he said, and they did it again. Do it a third time, he ordered, and they did it a third time. The water ran down the altar and even filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. Then Elijah commanded them, seize the prophets of Baal, don't let anyone get away. They seized them, and Elijah had them brought down to the Kishon Valley and slaughtered there. The title of this morning's sermon is Anticipate Blessings by Reverend Dr. Pradit Takung Rangsarik. I praise the Lord and give thanks to the Lord for giving me this opportunity to deliver his messages. I haven't used, I haven't preached in English for more than 10 years after I returned from Australia. So as a Thai person, you may expect some English in my pronunciation. So please forgive me for that. And maybe some of the word may exclaim something like Australia or Aussie language, or Aussie accents. So please also forgive me about that. My personal daily devotion each morning recently has been followed by Yeskiel, Yeskiel Ekstai in his reflections on the Torah portion of Holy Land Moments. Rabbi Eckstein is the founder and the president of International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. One of his reflections on Isaiah chapter 54 and also from 1 Kings chapter 16 to 18. Actually, the story is quite long so the leader just, I just asked the leader just to read only from chap, chapter 18, verses 20 to 40. But if you are Christians, I believe that you all, you all know this story quite well. So one of his reflections, he reflects about God's abundant blessings 
that abundant blessings is something that needs to be hoped for and anticipated for. And this blessing will come through for those who have faith and fully trust in the promise of our loving and merciful God. On the other hand, this promise or this blessing will not be possible for those who doubt about it. Rabbi Eckstein tells a story about two young couples, two, two young family who do not have child or do not have children. Two different childless couples who go to a rabbi for a blessing. Each couple shares with the rabbi the pain and suffering they are going through and how much they want to be blessed with a child. Both have the rabbi, both leave the rabbi with words of encouragement and a blessing. Within a year, one couple is blessed with a healthy baby while the other continues to wait. After years of disappointment, the husband of the, of the still childless couple went back to the rabbi. He went, they went back to the rabbi and start to voice their complaint. Why is, why is it that we are still waiting for a child when the other couple who came to you around the same time that we did was blessed almost immediately? He complained, they complained to the rabbi. And the rabbi answers, or rabbi's response is this. When you left, you appreciated the blessing and waited to see if it would come through. And this is different from the other couple. When the other couple left, they lived for joy and went out to a shopping store and bought a stroller. Their faith had created the vessel in which to receive the blessing. So this is different. In the similar way, the episode of the prophet Elijah that you have heard or you have read from the scripture this morning, Elijah, who was confronting with evil power in 1 Kings chapter 18 to 16 to 18, indeed echoes the quality of faith and trust in the living Lord in the time of doubt and uncertainty. The prophet Elijah faced enormous challenges and disturbed by such wicked authority and wavering community. These people, those who used, who used to follow God, has forsaken God and wavering about, around, wavering between to believe in God or to follow the Baal, the God of the foreign nation. It was during the reign of the king, of the evil king of Israel, whose name was Ahab, who had forsaken the true God to worship the foreign god and exercising ungodly practices. These are some examples of this wicked king which were not pleased to God. The Bible records that he did more evil in the eyes of the Lord than any others of his predecessors. It was not enough for him to sin like King Jeroboam, but went further 
and married Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of Sidon. The Bible continues to record that he also began to serve Baal and worship him. This act of infidelity is unacceptable to the Lord, and it is a sign of destruction. He even erected an altar to replace the altar to the Lord Yahweh. He erected the altar for Baal in the house in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. You remember Samaria is also the capital city of the northern kingdom of Israel, and where there is a temple also. And this is a challenge to God's sovereignty and the lack of loyalty to his authority. He did everything to replace the worship of the Lord, Yahweh. And this is a rebellious act of unfaithfulness and disobedience to the Lord. He also did more to provoke the anger of the Lord than what has been done by all the kings of Israel who were before him, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the sins and injustice were rampant, spread across the nation. Law and order were neglected. People did what they felt like to do. They were not able to differentiate or discern what is right or wrong, what is good or bad. The sense of outrage behaviors and practices is very string in the saying of the prophet Amos, who said this, they do not know how to do right, which also means they know how to do bad or how to do wrong things. It was indeed a time of spiritual fall away, much similar to our society and churches today. Do you think so? I don't know whether you think like me or not. People of different opinions, stands, and colors. These days in the Thai society, we identifying people with the color of the church. People go against one another. The minority rich and powerful take advantages over the poor and innocent majority. It seems that power, profit, and money have a big and powerful, powerful, powerful say in our church and society today, not only in the society, also in our church. This is a sign of destruction, a sign of destruction according to the Lord's teaching and standard. There is, therefore, an urgent need for spiritual revival. Repent and return to the living God with trust and obedience. And so, according to the episode you have heard and read this morning, actually throughout the history of Israel, or the history of human beings, in time of human disobedience and spiritual fall away, God always rests and caught upon human agencies, either a person or a group of persons, who put their fully trust and obedience in God. These people were willing to respond to God's call for the well-being of others, or in the Israel context, 
for the well-being of the nation. In our church, maybe for the well-being of people of the church or people of God. They are also willing to commit themselves to pay a price to be his faithful mouthpieces or spokespersons in a time of crisis, especially spiritual crisis. There are always people who take heed to God's command and are ready to do His will, personally, communally, or even societally. That gives us strength and courage to hope for a better future or better world to live, to live in, and enjoy immensely. And according to the scripture this morning, Elijah was one of them who did not afraid and reluctant to declare to a rebellious king and society that thus says the Lord, thus said the Lord, listen to his word. Elijah was chosen by God to firmly stand in the gap during that dark and evil era of Israel. He was chosen at the right place and the right time. And I believe that God also chosen each and every one of us at the right place and the right times, always. He was brave enough to challenge the authority of Queen Jezebel and the corrupted power of those prophets of Baal, 450 of them, one against 450. He was appointed to stand firmly to call upon the whole generation of people to do two, two things, to return, to repent, and to return, to repent and to return. Maybe in our times or our society today, we need to be another three R, and the third R, rehabilitated, to rehabilitate. What he said and did, though responding to God's command and will, should be good, isn't it? Should be right, isn't it? Because he has responded to the Lord's command and the Lord's will. But it was not acceptable and pleased the evil king and queen, including those 450 prophets and of Baal. Instead of receiving rewards and prayers, he received something different. He did not even get support from his own people, his own people, his own countrymen, which is very sad. How desperate is he? According to a moral standard, doing something good should be blessed and rewarded, isn't it? But instead, what Elijah has done comes with suffering and threat of death in return. Jesus Christ is a very vivid example whom we are following. You know how the story, the story went, so I'm not going to, to, to elaborate in details. The people of Israel and the 400, 450 prophets of Baal gathered at Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel. I wrote something about Mount Carmel in the Church News magazine when I visited Israel two years ago. Write, wrote something about mountains and have no time to write something about rivers yet, but I'm going to write. The Lord God vindicated his servant Elijah 
by sending fire from the heaven to consume the sacrifice. Here we see God in active action. I use these two terms. God is in his active action at the right time when it was most needed. We learn from this lesson that whenever we are in deep, serious trouble, God will intervene in his own way, not in our way. Psalm chapter 46 verse 1 said this, God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant, in the bracket, some translation, well-proved, a very pleasant or well-proved help in trouble, very pleasant help in trouble, not future help in trouble. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, Paul said this, We know that all things work together for good for those who love God. All things, love, all things work together for good for those who love him, not for those who forsake him. who are called according to his purpose. So what then are to say about these things Paul declare? So what then are we to say about these things if God is with us? Who is going to be against us? If God is with us, who is against us? Except you against yourself. So our stand is just patiently waited for and obeyed to God's faithful intervention or faithful answers. God's faithful action and his abundant blessings will come for sure. We cannot rush and force God to respond and act according to our own will or agenda or used in the Thai term, desire, gilet. Not according to our gilet or tanha or desire, but to wait and anticipate his action with faithful trust and hope, fully. You may ask, can I doubt? Yes, you can. But you cannot forsake him. The term waited or waiting in the scripture is very clear from Psalm chapter 46, verse 10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. If you are wavering, if you are trembling, if you are not sure, you are not still, you will not know that he is God. You will know some other things or some other people is God. I have a privilege to put one of these songs into Thai. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I am, that I am, I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Something like that. So I put it in Thai. It's very difficult. Be still in Thai. What, what terms to be used? And finally, I come up with this term. Samruam leru song pen prajao. Samruam is more than just be still. It's just contemplating contemplation and accepting and acceptance and be sure that who are we following. Samruam lao ru song pen prajao. Samruam lao ru 
้ทรงเป็นเห็นพระเจ้าสัมรู้ห่วมแล้วรู้ทรงเป็นเห็นพระเจ้า something like that because in Thai you know in in order to translate from English to Thai there is a tone if you put wrong term wrong tone it comes with wrong meaning so be still and know that I am Lord I am the I am God wait for the Lord be strong And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord, not wait for other things. That from Psalm chapter 27, verse 14. And Isaiah also respond to this in Isaiah chapter 40, 31. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. Very clear. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Be still. Waited for the blessings of the Lord with trust. However, the intervention and the blessings from God is sometimes is too slow for us. Not quick enough. And sometimes in our in our in the history of in, in, in our life, it is something we are yearning and longing for. It is indeed God's time using the Greek term kairos, not nomos. Kairos is God's time. Nomos is just only universal time. So indeed, it is God's time, not our own time and not our own agenda. It is a time to anticipate the powerful, powerful back action of our living God in the time of trouble and toil. It is also a time to witness our faith and trust in His merciful love and provision. We are also facing our historical moment now. Someone like Elijah must challenge the world, including our church and society today. We must challenge our people or ourselves to make a decision to worship either God or Baal, we have to make a decision whether we want to worship God or to worship Baal. As Elijah challenges, how long will you waver? How long will you waver between two opinions? If Yahweh is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, Follow him. You have to choose. You cannot sit on the two edges of the boat. But the people didn't say any word. They are so quiet. Not the same term like be still. You have to voice, your, you have to voice out your opinion. Whether you want to follow God, the Yahweh God, or you want to follow the Baal. Many, you can ask this, adapt this in many, many things in our daily living. You want to follow your wife, or you want to follow your husband, you want to follow money, or you want to follow anything. You can adapt it. Not until the people of Israel saw the mighty act of God, their eyes were wide opened, and their mouth should also be open wide, with stunning and awe. They then began to realize and recognize the Lord, that He is God. They all fell to their faces and cried out loud in acceptance and submission. The Lord, He is God. 
the Lord, He is God. Or Yahweh, He is the only God. My question for all of us, for you and me, this morning is that, do we have any condition before coming, confirming that the Lord is God? Do we have any condition before confirming or affirming that He is God? Do we require any physical witnesses to prove that He is our God? Do we need or do we have to see some miracles before proclaiming and affirming the Lordship of our God? How long do we need to be nurtured by the powerful words of God in our daily, in our daily walk with Him? Do we need any more miracles? Actually, my greatest miracle today is that I'm standing here, not lying there. That's my miracle. Why there are no guarantees in our lives, and we are certainly not able to understand fully the ways and the actions of God, or the way God answers our prayers. But one thing is for sure. Faith is conducive for blessings. Faith is conducive for blessings. As the Bible illustrates time and again, many of the miracles brought about were the results of unwavering faith. The more we believe, the more we receive. This is why the action of first childless couple of buying a stroller paved, paved the way to their induction into, into parenthood. This is why Elijah alone was strong and powerful enough to stand against the whole band of 450 prophets of Baal and won the battle. Just take heed to Micah's advice. What the Lord requires of us is this, to do what is just, to show constant love, and to live in humble fellowship with our God. Paul also suggests that, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you by you may discern uh, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptance, ac acceptable and perfect. So finally, brothers and sisters in Christ, there are times in our lives when we are waiting for our blessings and promises to arrive. But as this historical event suggests, don't just wait. Anticipate. Anticipate God's blessings. Have faith that miracles, miracles will happen and your faith may be the key that unlocks the doors before you. When we demonstrate to God that we have full trust and hope in Him, we will, He will answer our prayers faithfully. So what are we waiting for now? Go out and prepare for your blessings today. Amen. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. 
If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that they will not, there will not be room enough to receive it. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. And we will remain seated while we sing the hymn more about Jesus. And we, for the sake of time, we're singing only verses 1 and 2. Let's all stand together to sing the doxology. <clears throat> pray together. <clears throat> Our gracious and loving Father, we thank you again for your word. And we ask, Lord, that we may be those who are committed to following you day by day in our lives. <clears throat> we pray, Lord, your richest blessing upon us as we go into this coming week. Now may the peace and the blessing of God our Father and the love of God the Son the encouragement and the guidance and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us throughout the coming days. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated, and as you go into this coming week, may you be committed in following the Lord God, Jehovah, who is the God of the eternal God.
The Lord bless you and thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name.